Hi, and welcome to Life in the Only Growth. It is the peak of the summer season, and the warmth and the humidity is driving these insects crazy. In a very rare circumstance behind me, there's two hives that have established themselves right next to each other, and they're competing with each other for the same resources. Let's go and have a look. If we get down low, we can see that each hive is governed by a queen, and the queen emits a very special chemical that hypnotizes the surrounding insects and she has the ability to control them. There appears to be an amazing development from inside the hive. The beetle, one step at a time, stepping on top of other insects, blocking their abilities. We can see that the spider navigates its way around the hive, three steps at a time. The ladybug is agile and moves three spaces exactly, two on top and one down below. Ants protect by gaining access to exterior sections of the hive. The grasshopper exhibits great acrobatic ability by leaping over insects in a straight line. Cunningly, the mosquito adopts the identity of its victim. It appears that the insects almost have the white queen bee completely surrounded. Let's see what happens next. Oi, dude, where'd you do that for? Oh, sorry man, I hate bugs, but I do like the board game. Hive is a tactical tile placement game where players take control of various insects with certain abilities in order to surround an opponent's queen bee first in a light chess style game with lots of layers, lots of strategy and lots of depth. Hive is a game designed by John Yanni, published by Gen42 Games. It's for two players and plays within 15 to 20 minutes. There are many different versions of Hive that have been released. Today I'll be reviewing Hive Pocket Edition, as well as the Pillbug, the Ladybug and the Mosquito Expansion tiles. To set up a game of Hive, players take pieces of their corresponding colour, black or white, and place it in a pile in front of them. The object of Hive the game is to use a combination of your insect tiles and your opponent's insect tiles to surround an opponent's queen bee before they can surround yours. After deciding which player goes first, the first player places their insect in the centre of the table. The other player then places their insect so that it touches the first player's insect, forming the start of the Hive. After these first two insects have been placed, Players who wish to introduce a new insect must do so by placing it adjacent to a tile of their own colour. New insects cannot be introduced if they touch a tile of the opponent's colour. As you can see in this case, the grasshopper must be connected in some way to the stag beetle because it's black touching black. The opposing player uh, continues the play as so, placing it so that it touches a piece of their own colour first. New insects can be introduced in this way at any time throughout the game. Each player's queen bee must be introduced into the hive by the fourth turn of play and it follows the same rules for introducing a new insect to the hive. The hive always follows a one hive rule. As you can see, all the pieces must stay connected to each other in some way. A player has two options on their turn. They can either introduce a new insect to the hive, or they can move an existing insect using its ability, as long as it doesn't break the one hive rule. So for example, in this case, the black player would not be able to move the stag beetle because that would create a separation between these tiles here. So this stag beetle is actually locked into place. We will now look at each insect's individual abilities. The queen bee can move around the outside of the hive one space per turn. It can't step and block other insects and it can't leap over other insects either. Each of the sides of the hexagon on the hive counts as a space. So for example, this would be a space, this would be the next space, 
This would be the next space. The purple beetle can only move one space per turn by moving on top of an adjacent insect, thereby immobilizing it. This effect can be stacked. So if another uh, white stag beetle goes on top, it now blocks all the insects underneath it. The grasshopper can leap over the other insects in a straight line. The spider can move three spaces per turn around the hive, no more and no less. The spider can also move across pieces that it has direct contact with, like this. One, two, three. It can move like that because the spider made contact with this edge of the beetle piece. The lady beetle can move two spaces on top and then one space down and it's useful for filling in those gaps. The soldier ant can move from its position to any other position around the hive provided that the tile can easily slide into the spot. If it can't freely slide in, that ant can't get in. So for example in this spot, the ant can easily slide in and fit. However in this spot here, the ant would break the freedom of movement rule and could not slot into that space inside the hive. The mosquito takes on the movement characteristics of the last tile it touched. So in this case, the mosquito has touched the ladybug and the grasshopper. So on its next turn, the mosquito could be used to jump over this line of insects here, or it could be used to go up two spaces and then down one space. The pill bug has two special abilities. It can move one space at a time around the hive, or it can take in an adjacent bug, and provided that it doesn't break the one hive rule, it can pick up that bug, place it on top of itself, and then move it to an adjacent space. So in this case, the soldier ant moved from this edge of the pill bug tile to that edge there, thereby helping it block this queen bee. There are some special exceptions to the pill bug tile. It may not move a piece which was just moved by another player, it cannot move a piece which is within a stack of pieces, and it cannot move a piece if it splits the hive. It can also not move in between a narrow gap if it can't easily slide in. So for example, if the pill bug was over here, it could not slide in to that space there because it would break the freedom of movement rule. The insect that was moved by the pill bug on the last turn can now not be moved on the next player's turn. Play continues until an opponent's queen bee is completely surrounded. There's lots of things that I really adore about the game Hive. First of all, it's simple, it's fast to play, and the rules are very easy to learn. For anyone thinking about purchasing the game Hive, I would highly recommend the Pocket Edition because it's portable, it fits snugly into your backpack or your luggage case and you can take it overseas and play it while waiting for the plane, waiting for the train or simply if you're just sitting on a beautiful relaxing beach and you don't want to go out then this is a perfect game to take out and play. It's got lots of strategy, lots of layering and lots of depth and there's a lot of choices that players can make in this game which I really adore because uh, there is zero luck factor, there's no dice rolling Every tile that is placed on the hive is determined by the player. And especially at the beginning of the game, when you have your whole library of uh, tiles and insects and abilities, it's very uh, tough to decide which ones you introduce first and which ones you're going to lock into the hive and which ones you're going to save for those late game play movements. There's a lot of toing and froing in this game and what I really uh, find incredibly impressive is that a player will introduce a tile or an insect with the hope of using its ability to block the opponent's queen bee, but the other player will always have a counter strategy that will able to immobilize and stop that other player from using their ability. So there's a lot of um, competition between the players, there's a heightened sense of suspense, and every decision that you make in this game really counts and each player feels that it counts and every mistake that you make you can feel it coming through the game. A lot of players like to play competitively or um, offensively and other players like to play defensively however there's a lot of balancing that is required in this game and a lot of forward thinking and a lot of forward planning so even though it's a light game there's a lot of things that have to be thought through when you're playing this and can be prone to a little bit of analysis paralysis, but uh, it's on a very, very light side. Each time you play this game, there is no board, so the hive and the shape of the hive is unique. 
to each game that you play and is only determined by the way players position their tiles as you start out. I really love the fact that players actually have to think spatially in this game. In chess you're kind of confined to the grid board that you've got, whereas in this game you have to think laterally and you have to think about the shape of the hive and how it evolves and whether the placement of a certain tile or movement of a certain tile will lock your insect in. It's a different type of thinking, but it's definitely well worth investing in. In terms of the limitations, this is probably going to be a record in terms of the shortest section in one of my reviews for discussing limitations for a board game because this board game really is excellent. There's not a lot that I can say about it that I really don't like. There are only really two things and they're very minor, is that it's strictly two players and I would love to see a multiplayer expansion where players maybe play from different sides, like the different points of a compass, and the fact that sometimes it can be prone to analysis paralysis, but as I said, they're very minor. The rest of the rules are easy, very engaging, theme fits well. I would definitely recommend this to any players, especially long-time players who are seeking games that have a lot of, lot of depth, but not a lot of pieces, and not to mention, there's very little setup that you actually have to do because you kind of set up the game as you play. In my discussion section today, I'd like to talk about the immense educational potential that this game has for our students. One thing I'd like to highlight is the fact that it really teaches uh, people to plan ahead and plan ahead for those decisions that you might make further down the track, either in life or in the game itself. Uh, it's really great for teaching decision making and making certain decisions at the right time and not just making a decision and throwing it away when it doesn't really serve you any advantage. It really uh, teaches tactical and spatial awareness skills using the geometry of the tiles and the way the tiles are connected together really teaches students to think um, outside the square or outside the hexagon in this case. What I'd like to see is that if you're introducing this into an educational setting or within your own family, it might be useful to have two people play as the black side and two people to play as the white side. And what that really encourages is teamwork, a sense of negotiation, a sense of partnership. So instead of just one person versing the other person, you could have two people versing another pair. And that way, not only does it promote competition, but it promotes teamwork and cooperation as well. So that is probably one variant I would recommend in terms of this game. Now, to the expansion bugs. There are three expansion bugs that are a must-have uh, for the game Hive. First of all, there is the Mosquito. There is the Pill Bug. And there is the Ladybug. They add a lot of layer, a lot of depth, a lot of scope to the different choices that a player can make on their turn to the game. And it can add a little bit more to the length of the gameplay that our players are engaged in. First of all, the Mosquito. The Mosquito, uh, how it works is it takes on the abilities of the bug that it's attached to, and the player that moves the Mosquito on their next turn can use that bug's ability. So if it attached to the ant on the last turn, or the turn before, I can now use the mosquito like an ant. The ladybug can move two on top and one below, and it's really great for filling in those hard to reach gaps, especially if you're someone who likes to use the ant and tries to uh, block every other insect on the outside. Sometimes you create these little hexagonal gaps. The ladybug is really great at filling those internal hexagonal spaces. Now the pill bug. The pill bug, what it's able to do is it's able to pick up a bug that's surrounding one of the sides of um, this tile and it can move it to another side. What this bug really does to the game is it makes the game go on for a little bit longer. It's a really great escape mechanism uh, to use with your queen bee, especially if it's trapped and especially if it's surrounded by one of these pill bugs because this is a really great way of allowing your queen bee to escape. This one has the greatest power. Although you only have one, it's really important when you play the game to use it wisely. In talking about the variants for this game, 
there's one thing that I would love to see happen to this game, and that is to take this two-dimensional tabletop game into three dimensions. So I could imagine that each of these tile pieces, if they were recreated as dodecahedrons or some other 3D shape, and they were somehow connected to each other to create a three-dimensional hive, I would really love to see how this gameplay could be elevated to that level. So if the designer is out there and they're watching this video, this would be a great recommendation for a future expansion or adaptation of this game. And I can't wait to see what happens if something like that goes ahead. In considering my final verdict, I've realized that you don't have to be an expert entomologist in order to enjoy a game to do with bugs. It's got a lot of depth, it's very light and it's very suitable for two players and it's travel worthy. If you'd like to check out my review in greater detail, please stay tuned after the view. Otherwise, subscribe to my channel and I'll try and bring you some more exciting board game reviews in the future. So, this is Danny signing out. Thank you for joining once again. See you later. Bye.